This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise actually this content's kind of fucking garbage. Or if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back you absolute fucking loser. In either case, thank you very much. I do appreciate you being here. So for today's deck profile, we're going to do a quick rundown of my current Tri Brigade list, which is soon to be changing. I'll go into all the details towards the end of the video. What I'm actually going to do is that I know that there's definitely going to be some people here who are just here to see numbers and ratios and want to get in and out. Well, fuck you guys. I'm just going to go through the list quickly anyway, just so you can get in and then get out. Don't say I don't ever do anything for you. And then we'll go back over the list in a little bit more detail, discuss what I think works, what I think doesn't, what I think the strengths and the weaknesses are of the deck, and why I'm going to be changing the build that I'm playing. So for those of you who are in for a little bit more theory, you can hang around for a little bit longer and get a little bit more information. Now I do just want to say before we proceed, if you are looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, maybe you're feeling a little bit inspired by this absolute hot garbage I'm serving up for you, then you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description. If you go ahead and use that link, you'll get a nice discount on their eBay store. Now you'll also notice that I'm doing this on the world's most grotesque mat. That is because this is one of the first, in fact, this is the first play mat I ever owned. And I managed to get hold of it again. It looks like absolute shit. I've written all over it when I was a teenager. It's just as kind of edgy and random as you'd expect from being a teenager in the uh, mid noughties So, uh, <laughs> gladly you can't see all of the writing all in the corners. But anyway, I'm definitely getting a little bit off track. Let's get stuck into the profile. So as explained, my intention here is just to run through the cards relatively quickly the first time around, and then I'll go through in a little bit more detail afterwards, so that those of you who actually want to sit here and listen to some actual thought process going into this, you're welcome to do so. So we start off with triple copies of Rescue Cat. Uh, it's the Rescue Cat build, we're playing three copies, I really don't think I need to elaborate on that anymore. Yeah, it's, it's Rescue Cat. We're playing Triple Fractal, triple copies of Kit. Triple copies of Nerval, and then two copies of Keras. Apologies about the glare over this side. My lighting is not that great in here at the moment. Then on to Hand Traps. Triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. We've got Driver and the Gammas. Obviously, Driver's not a Hand Trap, but you get the point. We've got two copies of Ghost Spell and a single copy of DD Crow. And then for Spells, we have triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Triple copies of Fire Formation Tenki. Triple copies of Triple Tactics Talent. And then a single copy of Call by the Grave. And for our trap lineup, we have triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Double copies of Revolt. And a single copy of Imperial Order. Then onto the extra deck. Double copies of Ferrigit. Double copies of Bear Brum. A single copy of Rugal. Triple copies of Shreig. A single Almirage, a single Ancient Warriors, single Lambda, single <laughs> Doom Eagle, Appaloosa, Axis Code Talker, and finally Omega. And then onto the side deck. Tokens. So we've got a single copy of Pancratops, two copies of Gadala, triple copies of Lancia, two copies of Droll and Lockbird, triple copies of Anti Spell Fragrance. Triple Twin Twisters, and Harpy's Feather Duster. So for those of you who are just here, just to get your list, then get out. There's your chance. You can piss off now. And then for those of you who are not uncultured swine, here's a chance for us to talk through a little bit of theory. So we start off with Triple Rescue Cat. So Triple Rescue Cat, I think, is pretty much self-explanatory. There's not much to theorize about this. It gives you a very, very strong opener. It's a very, very good card. It's massive hand trap bait. It's just, it's a really, really cool starter card. Um, probably the strongest opening that you can sort of start with, I would say, in the deck. And then on to our Tri Brigade. So obviously Triple Fractal, Triple Kit, uh, Triple Nerval... And two copies of Keras. This is all more or less 
self-explanatory. Uh, I think this is pretty much the perfect ratio. There's times where I really want the third Keras just so I can go a little bit longer. Um, but honestly, it just doesn't... It's like the worst one to see in your hand, really. You want to be able to search it, and that's pretty much it. And that's why we just run the two copies. But otherwise, all these ratios are pretty much as you'd expect. Now on to our hand traps, your triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, uh, it's the best hand trap, like the most generic one, it hurts every deck in some capacity, I think I've only ever sided this out maybe once that I can recall ever, um, it just hits pretty much every single deck in some fashion, also the fact that it doesn't have to be discarded to the graveyard is, is a thing, obviously if you're playing against decks to banish, that can come up as well. Uh, we have Gamma and Driver. I think in the Rescue Cat version, this is mandatory. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. It goes like that. That's fine. Uh, you get the point. So, Gamma and Driver, obviously, you can just use Rescue Cat's effect. Almost always, someone is going to respond to you, and if they don't, they're going to allow you to just go off and go crazy. Uh, so, Gamma can really, really punish them. If they're smart, they'll probably just let you do it and accept the fact that they're not going to be able to interrupt you until you've got a monster on a field that's going to stay there. Um, but in that respect, they've already allowed you to get on with your plays, which normally puts you in good footing. Otherwise, you just double punish them. It's absolutely insane if you resolve this. Um, they end up losing a card out of their hand twice over before their turn even starts. Uh, and then Omega starts controlling their hand and it just gets really, really ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, pretty self-explanatory, I believe, at this point. Everyone knows about this card. Uh, double copies of Ghost Spell. I think this is very, very strong in the mirror and there are certain matchups where this just absolutely dominates. Um, but there are a lot of matchups where it's kind of dead as well. Uh, for me, though, it's a pretty good all-around trap at the moment, so definitely not a bad inclusion to have in there. And then finally, a single copy of DD Crow. We were running more than this because I was anticipating a ton of stuff like Sky Striker, but actually, nobody fucking plays the deck because, believe it or not, even with Engage off the list, it's not that great anymore. So, DD Crow is less prevalent. It doesn't do anything in the mirror match. So, I mean, that's going to be your main matchup, right? So, obviously, DD Crow is less valuable in that respect than I thought it would be going into this format. It is searchable, though, so as a one-off, it's not too bad. It can also be discarded so you can get your Keras out of your hand if you want to unclog it a little bit. But obviously, going, uh, you know, discard it, get rid of a card out of your hand that's um, potentially got some uses isn't always desirable. But for the most part, it doesn't really come up. And as such, I probably wouldn't run it going forward. Then on to our spells. So we got... Triple copies of Triple Tactical Talent. I've definitely got this all mixed up. Uh, triple Tactical Talent. Um, a lot of people do interrupt you again. This being a cat build in particular. In fact, just any of these builds. Everyone just wants to nail your uh, your tri brigades. As soon as they try their effects, wham. You know there's a hand trap coming down. Almost always, everyone is playing an insane amount of them at the moment. And as a result, you want to be able to just hit back at your opponent. Either by making them go minus two in their hand overall. Because they've obviously responded to you. And then they lose another one and you gain knowledge of their hand, or if you find yourself sticky and you really need an extra card or two to play through, of course you can draw cards, or if you're playing into your opponent's board, this can help steal monsters. We've got triple copies of Fire Formation Tenki. Uh, it says Search Fractal, so I really don't need to elaborate on that. Triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. I believe in the cat build in particular, you kind of want to use this. Um, some of the other builds are using Desires, like the Zoo one, where you can't afford the extra deck space. This is quite tight for extra deck space, but if you don't see an opening card at all, you can definitely find a way to get rid of six cards, or three if you really just want to get an extra piece in hand. And then finally, Call by the Grave. This card's absolutely insane at the moment, especially the amount of hand traps. It's good offensively, it's good defensively, it's just good all around. And then for our trap lineup, so we got triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Good going first or second. Pretty sure I don't need to elaborate on that again. It's actually quite a weird format in that it's very back row heavy, but there's also a lot of hand traps. As a result, you know, you can't get hit with like Call by the Grave or Gamma with this. So that has its real benefits. It's very good in the mirror, all that kind of stuff. We've got two copies of Revolt. I really wanted to up this to three pretty much since forever, uh, and I will be with my next build. I would definitely recommend running three. Hard opening it is really not the worst thing in the world. Sometimes if you've got like a dodgy hand and, uh, you know, you get stopped on something, maybe you've still got a fractal to go, you can dump the fractal or maybe you normal some of the fractal, its effect gets stopped. You can use its effect to send uh, and go off from there and you still just load your grave up and maybe you end up with an awkward hand or something like that. A lot of the time you can still fill your grave without committing too much to the board. And on like just an Almirage, let's say you normal summon the kit. Uh, and then of course you can link it off and go from there. Uh, maybe you can't get into any other plays. You can get enough monsters in the grave to be able to revolt your opponent. Which means you can still play the game. And then finally, one copy of Imperial Order. If you open this a lot of the time, it is just a win button. There's some matchups where it doesn't really come up. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty painful for people if you do see it. 
Now onto the extra deck. There's nothing too insane going on here. We've got double copies of Ferragir. I think two is perfectly fine. You definitely don't need the third. Uh, two copies of Burbrum. The second one comes up a bit more. Uh, I feel like it gives you the ability ability to grind a little bit more in this particular build i think you should take advantage of the extra deck slots that you've got free uh, and this is definitely a card that can do that i think two works out quite nicely it also means they can double up as a prosperity target if you only want to keep the one and you need to dig deeper it just gives you an option of a card to banish we then got a single copy of Rugal. Just one is more than fine. Uh, it comes up for the combo. It comes up for being able to set up if you've got like an extra piece or two and you don't really have anything else to go into. A lot of the time you can make this knowing that you're going to revolt your opponent in their turn. And then for the following turn, like the fault of their turns, you're going to have a way to summon monsters to the board and then go off with your Shurag again. Shurag had three copies in this particular build. Very, very strong. Very insane card. I'm sure I don't really need to elaborate on that. Uh, just absolutely nuts. Uh, you'd run a smaller package in other variants of the build, but I think for Cat, this works out quite nicely. We've got a single copy of Almirage. Uh, it's Almirage. It just helps you if you get stuck with, like, one in your hand and you can't do anything else. We've got Double Dragon Lords. It's Double Dragon Lords. This card's very, very strong. A single copy of Lambda. This is really good on paper, but I never found that it really comes up for me that much. I've used it a couple of times, but normally people know what you're up to when you summon it. Uh, it can play a little bit of mind games, which is always fun, but... It doesn't come up enough for me. It's it's kind of optional. It's it's entirely up to you. We've got a single copy of the Doom Desperate Doom Eagle. Um, it's good for shuffling stuff back. There's certain matchups where this is really, really strong. But the rest of the time, it's just generally speaking a beat stick or an option to get a Link 3 on board that you can use as material. And then for our two Link 4s, we have Appaloosa and Access Code Talker. So Appaloosa, obviously, is going to be your common go-to, along with Revolt uh, in your open and play if you can. This is normally what you want to end on. If you've got a lot of materials, you can uh, go into Dragon Lords as well as an option. Um, just that kind of stuff. Access Code Talker wins games on its own. This deck really, really struggles to go second. I should know. At this last weekend, I played... Uh, we did... 11 rounds across two different tournaments, box tournaments. I ended up 6-5, and five, which is unusually bad for me. Uh, and that was because I lost every single dice roll and had to go second two out of three games if I made it to the third in the first place. So um, this deck really struggles to go second, which is part of the reason we're changing up the build that we're going to use. But this will give you an option to use if you're not so unfortunate as me. This does win games on its own. And then finally, we have a single copy of Psy Fremlord Omega. Uh, we're running the Gamma package, so you want to run it. It just controls your opponent's hand, all of that sort of stuff. And then on to the side deck. Okay, so we'll start off with the elephant in the room here. Two copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, I didn't really have the room for the third, and there was nothing I wanted to take out. I felt like back row hate was really prevalent and important, so I needed to, to have options in there. So I couldn't omit the uh, one of Harpy's Feather Duster. And I felt like everything else couldn't really go, but we'll go through those in a minute. So just the two of these, you could definitely find space for the third if you wanted to. It just wasn't working for me. Uh, I've got a single copy of Pancratops. Uh, Pancratops, Pancratops. This card's wonderful. It never gets less wonderful. Uh, it just it deals with like two cards in one turn if you, if you wanted to. Otherwise, it's just a really annoying presence for your opponents to have to deal with. They constantly have to play around it if you keep it on the board because they know at any moment you can just quick effect and pop something. So something to keep in mind. A really good option, in my opinion, especially for a deck that needs to go second options. We also have triple copies of Lancia. Great in the mirror. Great in a lot of rogue matchups. Um, yeah, it's just a very, very strong card. Unfortunately, you never see it when you side it in. Such is life. But if you do, you're in a good position. And finally, two copies of Gadala. Um, we wanted a Kaiju to deal with Wind Barrier statues if they come up. Um, I haven't played against any decks of them, but I know the minute I take these out that that's exactly what's going to happen. It does have fringe benefits, though. It can deal with a lot of oppressive Go First boards. It deals with cards like Dragoon. Um, it can deal with Ignista with their fucking Towers guy. Um, it just has its benefits. Obviously, we just choose the Wind one for that Barrier statue application, but you can run other Kaijus if you don't necessarily have this one. Obviously, you're just going to lose to the Barrier statue in that respect. Then we have triple copies of anti spell fragrance. Um, these become pseudo imperial orders in in the games where this card comes up and really matters. Uh, it's just absolutely devastating. It just like auto wins pendulum games. Um, it basically auto wins against strike for the most part. It always wins against an awful lot of decks that just rely on like spells. You see this against like Drytron. If you can set this up with an Appaloosa, you've normally just won on the spot. Um, so just absolutely insane. I really like it, and I really wouldn't recommend cutting it. I think it needs to be in everyone's side deck at the moment. 
The mirror triple copies of Twin Twisters. Um, back row is a thing. This is so good in the mirror because you can force their revolt early. So although they can obviously choose not to activate the Shirag effect and uh, try and trigger it another way, it does mean that you've got one avenue gotten rid of. Um, there's a lot of other back row decks that you just need to worry about. And I think Twin Twisters is really, really strong at the moment for that reason. And then finally, Feather Duster for much the same. This could be something like Red Reboot as well if you wanted another option. Um, but there's tons of really good side deck cards at the moment that makes it very, very tight. So I would highly recommend just playing and seeing what works for you this of course is built for our locals so there will be some of that in mind to think about now in terms of some of my thoughts for the deck of course as i explained i'll be changing up the builds that i'm using i'm going to be going for the zodiac build going forward um originally that was the build that i was playing before i decided to go down the rescue cat route um at the time i didn't feel like uh running the package for zeus was just necessary i felt like using the extra deck slots for a bit more utility and that kind of thing felt like a better option um, and for the most part that's worked unfortunately though people of course are wise enough to the deck they're starting to get better against it and they're starting to know that if you really push it to go second it can struggle as I explained, we went to a box tournament at the weekend. Uh, I ended up 6-5 and five across the two different events, um, which for me is not a good enough result, quite frankly. I'm not happy with it. But there was there were some games that were just frankly unwinnable. Um, and a lot of the time that was down to the fact that I'd have an insane hand if I was going first, but going second, it didn't allow me to play through anything. Um, so as a result, I found myself in really, really difficult situations. You'll see all of this on the vlog, though, if you go ahead and watch that. Um, but for the most part, this really, really struggles going second. Uh, I played a mirror match, um, and I played against a, a version of the deck that was running Zoo as well. And just the fact that I can make him go second, he just didn't care. He, he just didn't care because he could just play through everything. Uh, I think it's just the strong of the two builds at the moment, particularly for the fact that people are wising up and forcing you to go second every given opportunity. Um... I just think that the deck has a little bit more legwork. I mean, if you open Rat, it's basically Rescue Cat anyway. Um, or if you open, obviously, the second Zoo, that can, it's the same thing. Um, so with that in mind, obviously, it just gives you more options. Zeus is just an absolutely insane card for breaking boards. If you can make it with four materials underneath and you don't get Nibiru'd, then your opponent's fucked normally at that point. Um, you're so much better with resources than they are that you're going to win the game at that point. Unless you're playing something like Eldritch, in which case it can be a bit tricky. But against most decks, that's going to win it on the spot. Um, so like I say... I, I struggled a lot with going second. I realised just how fragile this is when you're forced to after losing the dice roll. Uh, and I'm fed up, frankly, of just not being able to win games based on the fact that I lose a dice roll. Uh, that's the reality of the fact. Um, obviously, there's an element of, you know, not all of those games were were down to me playing perfectly and just having bad luck. Uh, there was two games that I definitely misplayed and, uh, you know, had I done something different, potentially could have won those. Uh, but that's hindsight. Three of them, though, were absolutely unwinnable. And more often than not, any of the games that I was losing was because I was playing going second. So um, playing go second, Tri Brigade, not recommended. Um, but if you're going to be forced to do it, you might as well be playing the Zoo Package so that you have an option again that profile will be coming soon of course once i've changed up once i've had a little bit of time to play with it and can discuss a little bit more detail exactly why i've gone for the ratios i've gone for and that kind of thing but most of these are pretty cookie cutter so there's not much to really talk about in that respect however hopefully you found this deck profile useful or some food for thought that you can go and take away and do something with i don't know what you do with that but you get the point um hopefully you've enjoyed it enough though to hit subscribe if you haven't already and uh, i'll see you in the next one